Hi folks, Dave Waring here again with FitSmallBusiness.com and today's lesson of the day. In today's lesson, we're going to continue our series on how to hire and manage with a look at how to write the perfect job description to advertise a new open position. So let's get started. Step one, make a list of the position's duties and responsibilities. One of the mistakes that small business owners often make when writing a job description is not outlining in detail what the day-to-day -day of the new employee will look like. This makes it hard to identify the right candidate for the job and makes it less likely that your job posting will attract the specific talents you require. So think about what the day-to-day -day responsibilities of the new employee will be and then put those responsibilities down in a list. Step two, list the skills and experience needed to get the job done. To make this list the most effective for your job description, you want to order it from most important to least important. An easy way to do this is to separate the skills and experience that an employee has to have to even be considered for the position from those that would be nice to have but not absolutely necessary. Step three, list any other important factors such as the type of personality you're looking for and how they will be working. Here are some questions to ask. Will this person be working independently or as part of a team? What are the personalities of the people on the team currently, and does this person fit? How much flexibility do they have in how the job is done? Do you need someone who can simply follow instructions, or someone that can operate with little supervision? How does doing this job in your company differ from, from doing a similar job at other companies? Step 4. Decide how much to offer. Studies have shown that as long as you are paying a fair salary, Money is not a good motivation tool for employees, so the best idea when writing a job description is to offer a fair salary, but find another way to motivate your employees. For more on the problems with using money to motivate, and what you should use instead, see the video by Dan Pink, which I've included in the resources link below this video. So how do you come up with a fair salary? The first thing you want to think about here is how much experience you want the person to have. Are you willing to pay extra to get someone who can come in and hit the ground running? Would you rather pay a lower salary and train someone with less experience? Once you have thought about this, you want to see what data is publicly available that can help you get an idea of how much your perfect candidate may require in compensation. Brad Ferris from nmass.com has a great video on exactly how to do this, as well as some other great tips on writing a job description, which I've included in the resources link below this video. Here's my summary of that video, which uses an interactive project manager in Chicago as an example. Search Google for interactive project manager salary range plus Chicago. Look for industry salary surveys. What are the trade associations that these types of people might be a member of? Search for their name plus salary data. Talk to other business owners and ask them what they are paying for jobs like this. Be sure you talk about the specific duties of the person so you make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Go to the advanced search on careerbuilder.com, search for the job title there, and then select show only those with salary info. Use the cost of living calculator in the resources link below this video to adjust the salary levels you find for similar positions to your location. Two things I would add to this are, Make sure the salary you are offering is fair within the context of what you are paying other people in your organization to both the potential hire and existing employees. If there are competitors that you know have similar positions, you may be able to see what they are paying using Glassdoor.com. From this, you should be able to come up with a salary range. You want this to be a fairly wide range so you get a nice mixture and can see what applicants look like on both the high and low end of the range. Step 5. Write the job description. Here is how it should be broken down. Job title. Be as specific as possible with the title. For example, let's say you're a plumbing company that sells to businesses in the Northeast and are seeking a sales manager. A bad job description title for this role would be sales manager. A better title would be Northeast Regional B2B Sales Manager Plumbing Supplies. About Us. Clearly and concisely outline what your company does and why someone would want to work there. Some things you may want to consider including here are what your company does and how big it is, your mission statement, any impressive stats relating to growth, and what your company's values are. This section should be three to five sentences max. Position details. Here's a quote which is also from Brad Ferris at nmass.com. 
and I think is a great overview of what you want the end result of your job description to look like. Write a compelling job posting, highlighting the challenges and opportunities that a successful candidate would face. Position the job as hard work, but rewarding, then sell the opportunity with your company. Positioning the job this way attracts more engaged candidates who want to make a difference and are exactly the type of people who make great employees. Here are some other things to consider including from another great article on the topic from JobScore.com. Why is the job open? Opportunity. Are you going to train this person? Do they get to work with a great boss? Will they develop leading edge skills? Is this a growth area of the company? Lifestyle. How many hours will they need to work? Will they have to travel? Will they get to hire or manage other people? Team style. What are the common attributes of the top performers on your team? Next, list out the required skills for the position. Go back to the list you made in step two and list the top three to five skills that the candidate must possess to even be considered for the job here. After that, list out the bonus skills. These are the things from step two which are not required, but would be a nice bonus if the candidate possessed them. And finally, add the further instructions section. Let them know how you would like them to apply. Another tip from Brad Ferris that I like for this section is to ask for a cover letter which addresses some specific point. This will make filtering through the stack of resumes easier as you can immediately discard those who did not address that point. That's our lesson for today. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Also be sure to stay tuned for the next lesson in this series where we will discuss where to advertise your job posting. For more great advice on how to start and run a successful business, be sure to visit us at fitsmallbusiness.com today. Thanks for watching.